what a morning view. So many people. So honestly, honestly, so far this is my um, favorite one in the favorite toilet in the way of saying what? Uh, yeah, so it's pretty easy to open that one. But um, yeah, that's the inside. The fun thing is that you cannot close this door. And it has this open, awesome view, meaning you can yeah, you do have an awesome view, but uh, looking outside, but there's somehow a downside is that also people uh, can have a nice look upon you when you're inside. So I don't know ever who ever that constructed. Right now it's okay, but anyway. If I learned one thing out here, then it's never ever trust the weather forecast. So it wasn't supposed to rain, but it is raining. Yesterday it wasn't supposed to be thunder, but there was thunder. So yeah. Better trust your gut instinct. Welcome back one last time to the Southern Kungsleden. Today is my second to last day, so tomorrow there will be only like 10 kilometers be left for me to hike, and then I'm officially uh, done with the Southern Kungsleden. And yeah, today it is the same as the last few days for me. Basically, I'm exhausted. I'm mentally completely exhausted right now and I do need a break. I can feel it also with my filming today. There was no energy so I barely filmed anything at all. And I'm already in right now at the um, Blohammer fjell station. So I already hiked 18 kilometers and I will do another six today so that I don't have to hike that much tomorrow. Um, because actually I'm rather eager to finish this one here. I know like that a lot of people just tell me right now like hey it's so awesome where you are and the view is so amazing there and yeah that's true but I don't feel it anymore and that's why I realized I really do need a break, break of a week or something like that so I'm pretty happy that one is around the corner just three days down the road 
and so I can recharge my batteries because I'm really a little bit like fed up you could say. I've got so much awesome scenery around me like the whole day um, that I barely can, I can't really value it anymore. So it's probably a good thing to go back to the good old Berlin big town. Um, in my eyes pretty ugly so to recharge a little bit and then come back and see this beauty again and being able to yeah value it again. I mean like this view it's completely stunning probably for you even for more uh, for you more than it is for me but yeah I can barely see it anymore. So these things they happen so and I don't want to lie about them. So there are times that are better and times where I simply yeah drag on you could say. And I'm a little bit sad actually that it happens right here at the southern Kingsleden. Um and not somewhere else. But that's how it is and I don't want to play like oh I'm so happy and everything is so great um when I don't feel it. So this episode is definitely way shorter than the others um, but I still wanted to show you some of the beauty because you might be still a person who can value it and say it oh my god that's amazing and yeah maybe one day I will say, say so again. Somewhere down there is my place for the night. Well, I think you can barely see it, but there is my bit must be Stolien, the she area. That's where I have to go tomorrow. Back to civilization with a huge bridge. And over there it's the place where I will sleep. Yeah, I think that was a good choice. Just the mosquitoes are annoying down here with all the trees surrounding. That was better above tree line. Yep, that's a nice enough spot. And here I'm going to stay. And yeah, here I'll pitch up my tent.
right, that's it. I'm nearly done with the southern Kungsleden. Just something like seven kilometers left. And yeah, I actually don't really know what is my favorite part of the three. Um, I think maybe one day I will make a whole video about it because none of them were perfect. The first I had to battle with the um, wet underground. Um, the second one was completely different. And the third now is view-wise probably the most epic one. But something I don't really like here, and maybe just because I'm a little bit spoiled after the um, southernmost parts, are that there are so many people. So, um, and the infrastructure is maybe a little bit too much for what I like. So these are really remote areas, and then they have these huge fuel stations during the last three days, um, where you've got everything, and... I'm not sure, it's like really hotel-like. And the little huts, the stugas, I like a little bit more. Because there, yes, you do have rooms, you can get into them. You have a place to sit, a little kitchen. But really like a small scale. And at the stations you have like real water closets, you can take a shower, you have... Um, uh, people who cook for you and that's really I don't know it's not the stuff I really like um, when I'm out here I just love to explore the wild and be more on the wild side so I really felt strange coming into this um, touristic area with so many people like um, two days ago we camped at a spot there were in the evening um, 40 tents and it's just a tent like there are more people because often they hike together so I think there were at least 60 people um, just sleeping in the tents this night plus the whole place was probably booked out so the whole um, all beds and I even saw a sign at the um, at the shower um, which said in the evening um, people sleep here please use another one um, so really every possible space was taken and so it felt really, felt really strange to the southern part where um, I was basically alone with my two German hiking partners and that's really yeah quite the contrast if you have only like maybe we were three maybe uh, one or two tents more um, to coming to an area where you're basically anonymous. So when you're with the just one or two other tents, you usually maybe talk to one another, uh, get, get a little bit of contact, um, exchange information. But these fiel stations, it was really like a shock seeing so many people. And we all three felt a little bit like being outsiders. So yeah. I don't know. You do have, do have definitely some comfort. So when I came down from the um, from the rain, uh, so it was completely wet and cold, and it was still raining. It was nice to sit inside and be able to um, drink um, hot chocolate or tea. But yeah, I don't know. Basically, I think I'm more against these fuel stations. So probably the next time I'm here, I'll make a huge bow around them. Or maybe in the northern part as well, just when I really need them. Um, if it, the weather is really bad, then I might hit one, but otherwise I think I will more ignore them. So actually something about I'm really happy is that the I will hit the northernmost part of the northern Kungsleden pretty late. So after the hiking, main hiking season you could say. Um, so that there are just not that many people around as there are probably right now in the peak hiking season. And yeah, maybe I will enjoy it a bit more than or have a little different tactic or at least being mentally prepared because like the first, uh, the last three days I wasn't mentally prepared of seeing so many people again, of not being alone. So later this day I was again alone. 
but especially in the morning there were so I could so see so many people and yeah even if it really um, usually I only film when uh, there are no people around because I feel a little bit uncomfortable doing that around other people um, there usually are sometimes people around but this time I it were too many for me so I could see like uh, turn around and especially if this open space I could see uh, so many like little dots walking around and it, fe it felt a little bit like uh, the um, Camino of St. James in Spain. So <laughs> not that, not the experience I had from the first two weeks on the southern Kungsleden.